Well, good evening, everyone. I will be take over. I mean, I will take over this session because the speaker did not arrive and did not. I think she's, she's still on the way, so I'll have to discuss uh, first the deepening of pedagogy as part of the licensure examination for teachers. Uh, by the way, I'm Jan Axel L. Cortez, and we are broadcasting live in our Facebook also, and at the same time in our Zoom. So please bear with me as I discuss to you the uh, deepening of pedagogy, which is essential in your licensure examination for teachers as well. Please stay put for a while. So for tonight, I'll be focusing on the deepening of pedagogy as part of the uh, coverage of the licensure examination for teachers. Uh, while waiting for the speaker, Jill Morcantal, uh, he will be joining us later on this evening. So uh, the main purpose of this deepening of pedagogy is to understand the concept of deepening pedagogy and its significance in education, and also to explore the innovative approaches that promotes student-centered learning because uh, we, we are, during the board examination, most especially in the uh, professional education, usually there are times that uh, the uh, there was one question in board examination we're in. Uh, the question goes on uh, whether the focus of the K-12 curriculum is teacher-centered or stu student-centered. So, this is a student-centered curriculum, and at the same time, uh, focusing more on what the learner, uh, uh, making facilitating learning or making it simpler for the for the learners. At the same time, for the teachers in 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 teaching. So the pedagogy itself is not just teaching alone. There are many features that involves in this one. So tonight, I will not be going to have a question, but I'll just have to discuss. Uh, most of the topics related to pedagogy and this is part of the professional education pedagogy can be defined as the theory and practice of education it also encompasses the principles methods and strategies used by educators to facilitate learning and create effective teaching and also uh, learning experiences and then pedagogy plays a crucial role in shaping the teaching and learning experiences of students it encompasses the theories strategies and techniques used by educators so pedagogy itself is not only limited to teaching but it also involves theories also strategies and techniques the difference between the strategies and methods could be a learn in your principle of teaching one i think in when you are uh, way back in your college days and by focusing on pedagogy, we can create in the engaging and meaningful educational experiences that meet the diverse needs of learners. That is the main purpose of the pedagogy. And of course, the pedagogy plays a vital role in shaping the quality of education. And
the pedagogy plays, as I've said a while ago, that is a plays a vital role in shaping the quality of education. It also provides the foundation of instructional design, the classroom management and assessment practices. And it's also effective pedagogy considers the diverse needs, abilities, and learning styles of students and promoting engagement, motivation, and deep understanding. So most probably during the board examination, there will be questions related to the learning styles. And you always you should always put in your mind that no one size fits all. That is not applicable in the um in in the teaching and at the same time in the pedagogy. Promoting engagement, motivation, and deep understanding. And what is pedagogy in teaching? Pedagogy in teaching can be referred to as an educator's understanding of how the of how the students learn. The teachers are focused on presenting the syllabus to the students in such a way that it is relevant to their needs. So when we speak of uh, syllabus, it is mostly used in in college, but in for example, if you will be applying in the Department of Education, because I myself is also part of the Department of Education, what we use is a curriculum guide. The curriculum guide is what we are using in uh, the Department of Education, especially in elementary and secondary, and in such a way that it's relevant to their needs. So what is a teacher pedagogy? Teacher pedagogy refers to the pedagogy that is centered towards the teacher who gives the most meaningful course information. Always remember that that is centered towards the teacher, if that is teacher pedagogy, and gives the most meaningful course of information. And then the learner, on the other hand, could be only a pale or somewhat like uh, the receiver of the information in this kind of pedagogy. And what is teacher pedagogy? Again, this is in this approach, the teacher has a large responsibility of giving correct information to the students in the right way. Irrespective of their teaching styles, the teacher can give a clear understanding of how the students are doing concerning their learning and also be an effective model for the target language. There are five major approaches to pedagogy learning. The constructivist, collaborative, integrative, reflective, and inquiry-based learning. This is also apparent in the Republic Act 10533, if you remember, uh, the act of establishing the K-12 curriculum or the implementation, full implementation of the K-12 curriculum. So there should be the five approaches, major approaches that are or that are being applied in the K-12 curriculum. Sooner or later, I think in 2004-2025, it was planned uh, it, it shall be returned to uh, K-10. There was a proposal for that, and we're just waiting in the Department of Education as it is still uh, on debate if it will be reapplied again. So constructivist, collaborative, integrative, reflective, and inquiry-based learning. These are the or these are the five major approaches of pedagogy in learning or in pedagogy approach. Then this one, the constructivist. In this approach, the students are allowed to be present in the process of understanding and gaining knowledge rather than just passively receiving information. So construct from the knowledge. There are famous, um, who are those famous theories for this one? If you remember, there is uh, one of the theories of constructivists is the Lev Vygotsky. If you remember the zone of proximal development and at the same time, his proposal on constructivism. I mean, in proposed theories on, uh, I mean, theory on constructivism. And we're still waiting for Sir Gilmore to join us, hopefully. Jim, uh, please call Sir Gilmore. And maybe she, uh, he already arrived. And of course, the gaining knowledge rather than, rather than just passively receiving information. That is on the constructivism. So they are, uh, example, one concrete example for this one is that uh, when a teacher asks for the uh, or for example, in the part, the lesson plan, there is review, diba? Before we proceed to the discussion, so in reviewing uh, the past lesson, it could be unlocked by the teacher and then proceed to the new lesson by basing it on the learning of the students. So, for example, what do you know about, uh, for example, in the class of grammar? What do you know about 
action words. And then the students will say on the previous experiences. And from out from their answer, we construct a new knowledge from it. That is how uh, one of the ways in uh, applying this constructivism. And then this encourages critical thinking among the students and gives a learning environment in which they can connect with what they are hearing. So in 7.15 later on, so there are still four remaining approaches. So hopefully, Sir Gilmore will be joining us right now. And uh, you relax for a while in our group chat because there are a lot of questions that he is going to present here. I'm just telling you the approaches uh, based on the recent a recent memorandum that we received in our department. And at the same time, it could be shared to you because there are questions that could possibly be part of the licensure examinations for this coming September 2023. And in collaborative, we we'll consider this one as the students form groups of learners that learn together and work to solve a problem, build strategies, ideas, create products, or complete tasks. So by group could be a focus group discussion, or it can be by any other means of collaborative carousel, if you are familiar with that one. And that is one strategy in teaching wherein the group of students learn from each other. I mean, from each other, sorry. And this is also a joint intellectual effort by the students among themselves or with the help of the teachers. Okay, so we're still waiting for Silvio more. Integrative, for the integrative approach, the students are given a learning environment that helps them in connecting with the learning across the syllabus. So it could be considered as uh, in our, in the Department of Education, this is a curriculum guide. So integrative approach, it could be integration from one subject to another. For example, uh, integrating social science in grammar. Uh, Jose Rizal is our, our national hero. So there are two, hitting two birds at one stone. That is integrative in nature. Uh, when the topic is about grammar and then a subject verb agreement, for example, in that case, and then there was also a touch in the history of Jose Rizal. So in that way, there is already an integration from one lesson to another. And the four objectives of integration include understanding the process of learning, differentiating issues of relevance, and making use of uh, the lessons in practical scenarios. It also associates the concepts in regular lives. And of course, always remember that these four objectives in, in, of integrative approach, uh, these are uh, relevant in making the lesson more meaningful for the students because the process of learning has been, has been considered. And at the same time, the Different issues will be tackled during the integration of lessons from one subject to another, or it could be in a form of thematic teaching. For example, all lessons to, for this uh, for this month shall be based on uh, national. Uh, for example, buwan ng wika. So most likely, most of the topics for this month it could be part of the lack session of teachers. If you have learned already about lack session, uh, this is. All uh, this is, I think, if you're if you have underwent, I mean, undergone, if you have undergone a um practical courses, like for example, uh, practicum, I'm sorry, practicum, you are able to learn about the lock session. We speak of lock that is a learning action cell, so you can use the learning action cell in integrating uh, those lessons. That is a meeting of teachers in in a room or in a class wherein they will plan for the whole month of what is going to be uh, the strategy that they shall employ in, in teaching a lesson in a week. And reflective, as per the reflective approach, the students are expected to evaluate themselves. So again, this is part of the uh, Republic of 10533. And then reflection is very important so that the students cannot just uh, will just not learn by a lower order thinking skills as much as possible. They should they should also learn through higher order uh, thinking skills. So reflection is one of it. 
And then it means observing the activities of teachers and other students in the classroom and analyzing why they do it and how it works. It is very important to have a reflection because, for example, a student will ask, Sir, why are we solving this kind of problem in math? Can I use this in real life? Can, it, can, it, can I use this when buying a viand or a food in the market? When we, when we are tackling about the x plus y equals zero, sometimes there are uh, students who ask like that. And then you should also uh, let them know that the that particular thing that you are discussing should be applicable in real life. That is your uh, job as a teacher. But let the student reflect and apply it to the real life scenario so that it will be meaningful to them. That is the definition of a meaningful experience. So as much as possible, that the topic that you have is relatable for the learner to understand. And inquiry-based learning, this one. Uh, the inquiry-based learning method, educators are expected to not just answer the queries of the student, but also build a culture where the ideas are explored, challenged, improved, and refined. So inquiry-based, let the student ask, question, uh, ask questions. And then you also, you can also ask questions because uh, just like Socrates, if you have remembered the Socratic method, most of the time when the student could could, uh, shall I say, could ask more questions, it means to say that they could, they are having that kind of critical thinking. The Socratic method is your way of asking the students questions so that the learners could also learn from a series of questions based from their answers. So inquiry-based is very important because uh, Socrates became famous not because of his answers, but because, but because, of, because of his questions. So same as you, as much as possible, you ask more questions rather than having more answers. I don't know if that is true, but uh, they said that that is a, one of the basis of, of measuring an intelligent person. If the many questions that he has, of course, the questions should, should be somewhat like belongs to the higher order thinking skills, no? uh, developing that on the students. I hope Sir Gilmore is already part of is already here. I know my sister Jill Moore. Where are you now, sir? Hopefully, you can join us now. Sir Jill Moore. Okay. So I'll just continue for a while while we are waiting for Sir Jill Moore. Uh, explore, challenge, improve, and refine. It aims also to take the students from the position of wondering about a question to understanding the answer. And then questioning it farther. Uh, for a while, I will be calling Sir Gilmore. Bia niya ako na seta, lima man yun. Okay, we'll continue. Uh, someone is uh, turning on the microphone. I think, uh, please. Uh, okay, wait for a while. Who is talking right now? Uh, I will mute this one. Okay. Sir Gilmore is still on the way, so I'll just have to continue to discuss this one while waiting for him. Sir Gilmore will be discussing on the Rizal Life's works and I and uh, mathematics, basic math. So I'll just continue discussing this one while waiting for Sir Gilmore because this is also important. <clears throat> Excuse me. It also aims, again, inquiry-based learning, it aims to take the students from the position of wondering about a question to understanding the answer and then questioning it farther. So Socratic method or Socratic questioning could be applied here. Socratic method, I'm sorry. Socratic method of questioning could be applied here because you will be asking more questions, asking questions farther. The importance of pedagogy in teaching, this one. It improves the quality of teaching. If a well-taught pedagogy is implemented in the classroom, the quality of education can show a drastic improvement. This will benefit, benefit the students by helping them thoroughly. 
understand the education material, thereby improving the learning outcomes. That's why you should have a lesson plan when it is asked in the... Uh, there was a question uh, about lesson plan way back 2018. Uh, when do you... Is it possible for a teacher to teach without the lesson plan? So the answer for that one should be no because the lesson plan should always be with the teacher. And this one, if there is a well-thought pedagogy that is implemented inside the classroom, the quality of education can show a drastic improvement. So a teacher should always be prepared in the lesson. In our case for tonight, because our speaker did not arrive, so I should be also prepared on my part as uh, a replacement or a substitute for the uh, absence of our speaker. Uh, this will benefit the students by helping them thoroughly understand education material, thereby improving the learning outcomes. It also, uh, this one, encourage cooperative learning environment. So the importance of pedagogy in teaching, it is. it also encourages cooperative learning environment, cooperative, or it could be considered as uh, working with one another. The implementation of pedagogy in education encourages the students to work together towards completing a task and learn together. Uh, this also increases their perceptions by understanding and taking views from the other students. This one, this is very important because sometimes what you perceive is uh, morally correct, but to the others are not. Just like, for example, the the one of the questions in the board exam, no, uh, there was this question about uh, uh, about existentialism. So uh, the question goes like this. Uh, how did how did it was delivered? Uh, what is morally uh, what is morally right for you may not be morally right for others. What is morally right for others may not be morally right to you. So in that case, uh, the, the in that question uh, on what ism Kurushana belong does that statement belong? So that belongs to the existentialism because. Uh, because of the uh, independence of the writer. What is morally correct to you might not be morally right to others. And what is morally right to others may not be morally right to you. So that belongs to the existentialism. And the cooperative learning could be learning from the other point of view. That is very important, not only considering your view, but also taking the views of others. So the students should learn to analyze that sometimes in their perception, they might be correct, but on the other side, they are also correct. So by the cooperative learning, by encouraging this kind of pedagogy, uh, cooperative learning, this is important in, uh, this is, this encourages, uh, this is significant, I mean, in the pedagogy because it encourages cooperative learning among the students. And, uh, and the cooperative learning environment is also important inside the class because it is it promotes unity among the students other than ranking the students and by the way there was a research uh, recently because i am also a researcher i found out that uh, it is not good to uh, rank all the students from first up to for example if you have 40 students you rank them from first up to 40 so it's not a good practice it discourages the student or the students who are at the bottom and it is not good. So always remember when you have, when you want to promote unity among the students, to promote cooperative learning, consider that ranking them is not, is not an ideal way of promoting or encouraging the students. So that is research based. Huh? It was found out in one of my uh, research that I made, one of the researches I made just uh, last year. And it was also published in the International Journal uh, Research Publication. And this increases their perceptions by understanding and taking views from the other students. So always remember that this, is, that's the, this pedagogy in teaching encourages cooperative learning environment. It also eliminates monotonous learning. What is monotonous learning, if you remember? Pwede siguro ako magbasa ng mga comments dito. I'll just try if I could see here. Okay for a while, there we go. 
or the students who are at the bottom for a while. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Sir Kapampangan is also watching. <laughs> Sir Rod. <laughs> Okay. okay, we'll just continue. Uh, pedagogy and child development work hand in hand. It helps the students think in different ways and move beyond the traditional methods of memorization and comprehension for learning. It invokes complex processes of learning among the students, such as analyzing creative thinking and evaluation. Uh, Sir Rods, are you with us? Okay. Uh, eliminates monotonous learning, monotony. So, meaning uh, it is only single, single way of teaching the students, for example, in a way of lecturing that is not good uh, in, a, in especially in teaching wherein you will just teach on one strategy so as much as possible when you become a teacher one day when you become a licensed professional teacher hopefully this september 2023 always remember that uh, monotony is not good inside the class monotony of learning i mean teaching style the teaching strategy so it should be eclectic when you speak of eclectic, that is combination of different, uh, different strategies. Kasi nakakaumay rin minsan pag paulit-ulit na lang ang strategy that the teacher is, uh, has been using. And also it invokes complex processes of learning among the students, such as analyzing, creative thinking, and evaluation. So that is one of the importance of one of the importance of the pedagogy in teaching. And this one. One of the importance is student can follow their ways of learning. A well thought pedagogy can help the students to grasp education in various ways. It caters to the learning abilities of different students, and students can follow their preferred ways of learning and stick to them. So, whatever is their learning styles, uh, through this teaching pedagogy, or uh, teacher uh, pedagogy of teaching, I'm sorry, uh, this could help them in in following their learning style their it could be different but there are many learning styles that they that the student can possess for example uh, they are olfactory or auditory could be visually but there are many uh, learning styles that a student could would have and also this one convenient learning approach for all students with special needs require different ways of learning uh, this is very important especially in in be ed uh, students like uh, those also who major child and child and early development early childhood development i'm sorry uh, this uh, needs require different ways of learning and teaching uh, especially students with special needs Implementation of suitable pedagogical approach will help them learn better, encourage them to be part of mainstream learning community. Always remember that we are practicing in the Department of Education. As in Goa's support, maybe this will also come out in the board exam. Uh, we are uh, practicing the inclusive education, meaning all of the students, regardless of race, uh, culture, age, and gender, or special or not, uh, they should be accommodated in our school. Always remember that one, that is inclusive education. So uh, this also encourages them to be part of the mainstream learning community. So the mainstream are those uh, regular students. So convenient learning approach for all. This is one of the importance of it. Then moving on. Okay, moving, moving on, um, improves teacher-student communication. The teacher understands the student in a better way, which helps them to focus on the student's weaknesses and guide them. So teacher-student communication is very important so that uh, they could, uh, we, uh, the teacher could easily transfer uh, her learning, at the same time construct new learning with a harmonious relationship. When we speak of, by the way, when we speak of a harmonious, or for example, 
a class a class that is conducive to learning that is not only a classroom that has a good physical uh, aspects uh, that is only superficial when you speak of a convenient or shall i say conducive learning environment that is also the good relationship between the teacher and the student that is not only limited to the design the classroom the facilities the books instructional materials but also the harmonious relationship between the teacher and student please put that in your mind when you become a teacher one day the good relationship that you have with the student is already a conducive learning can be considered a part of conducive learning environment so that is that is uh, not practiced by some but of course uh, that is not uh, some people are not aware of that but it should be uh, should be uh, noted that the harmonious relationship is very important inside the class that is a conducive learning environment that is not only limited to the classroom uh, classroom design lang, or for example there is there are already computer there are already instructional materials that is already conducive classroom a uh, conducive environment no consider also the relationship between the teacher and the student not the filial or i mean not the romantic relationship that is not huh? that is not applicable but there was a case on uh on that taitong national high school versus chuakua in that case that uh, sometimes if a teacher fell in love with a student what is your what do you think is your answer if for example you fell in love with your student is it uh legal for example you are single you're a teacher and you are single and then your student is also single and then you fell in love or you fall in love with him or her is it morally or legally acceptable please comment down your answers let me see what is, what are your answers again the question that i posted is uh, is it possible single you're a teacher and you are single oh, and then single and then you fell in love, you fell in love. Oh, okay for example you fell in love with your student uh, do you think it is uh, legal your student is for example a senior high school student 18 years old that is already uh, i mean adult you know 18 years old and then you fell in love with your student is it legal legally right so the answer is mostly here no 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 sir uh, according to mom charlie maria lila shirel glenn jaira okay no ang answer ninyo most of you said that it is not it is illegal to fall in love with a student. Are you sure? <clears throat> Excuse me. The question is, is it leg legal to fall in love with a student? 18 years old student, 18 year old student. What is your answer? Ma'am Chipen answered no. No, sir. How about the boys here? The question is, uh, reviewers who are male male reviewers what is your answer what if you fell in love with your student jipin <laughs> changes her answer no sir then he change as uh, she changes to <laughs> yes sir <laughs> Allah. according to mamarites legal as long as walang malaswang nangyayari in public okay about novit lotista According to her, legal as long as hindi na siya under sa isang teacher. Uh, to Ma'am Hassan, according to Ma'am Hassan, uh, Ma'am Pini, no sir, you're telling the student do not do it again. Uh, what if, why did you, uh, the question should be, about, the question was about the teacher falling in love with the student. Uh, according to Ma'am Japan, God changed my answer because I think my answer is wrong. 
Sige. What is your answer? Final answer. Is it okay to fall in love with a student? Is it legal to fall in love with an 18-year-old student? May nagsasabi ng no. May nagsasabing legal as long as hindi na siya under sa teacher. Okay. So the answer for this one as long as hindi na siya under sa teacher. Actually, the question is about the legality. So, the, okay, the so correct answer, answer for this one, one is uh, yes, it is legal. But that could be morally wrong. So, there are, that is two different words. Huh? Legal and moral. If you fell in love with a student and then he she is 18 years old enough, it could be legal. You are not doing anything. If you are going to marry her or him, that is legal. Pinagmamahala naman kayo. Because according to Miriam Santiago, di ba? <laughs> ano ngayong sagot niya sabi ni Miriam Santiago? If you remember, sagutin mo lang raw ng uh, dahil kailan may hindi mali ang magmahal. Legal lang siya as long as hindi siya under ng sakit. This the answer of ma'am. This one is also right. No? Yung kanga, that there should be no uh, walang malasong mangyayari in public. Legal but not ethical. Yes, that is correct also, Sir J. Uh, legal but not ethical. Yes, of course, as much as possible, if 18 years old enough naman, you may fall in love with your student. Dahil hindi naman natin alam. I'm not encouraging you to fall in love, fall in love with your student. Ha? I'm, what I'm just saying, if that, if that is asked in the board exam, you may fall in love with your student. Oh, so it could be, the answer is, uh, it is... It is legal. It could be legal if you marry your own, marry your student. If you're in love with your student, there's nothing wrong with falling in love. What we are, but if this, it is unethical. It could be a violation in the code of ethics of teachers. So teachers, as much as possible, should avoid falling in love with uh, his or her student. And this one also by Mama Rites, uh, walang malasong nangyari. This also uh, right. So as much as possible. As much as possible. The Supreme Court has already decided about this. Uh, they they allowed the teacher. I mean that there was this teacher uh, in Iloilo uh, who fell in love with her with his student, and then uh, she married the student. Then later on, she was dismissed from service. But and then the teacher filed a case, and it reaches to the Supreme Court. And the decision of the Supreme Court was that. Uh, the teacher should not be punished like that, should not be terminated from, from the school where she was working because she just fell in love with her, with her student and, and she married him at the legal age. So there's no problem with that. That is legal. What, but that could be unethical on the part of the school. But of course... Our loss is above all the rules inside the school. Mas mo, mas mataas pa rin ang Supreme Court over all other uh, governing bodies about this one. So again, that is, that is legal, but that not ethical. That is a violation of our code of ethics of teachers kung, uh, if we fell in love with students. I remember my high school teacher, uh, there's, there was a statement here. I remember my high school teacher, she fell in love with this proof during her college and now they're married with two kids. Forbidden love daw po ang tawag. It is forbidden love, but that is illegal. Ma'am Jaira. Bawal man siguro, sir, ma'in love sa student. Pwede man lang ma'in love sa student. Basta, again, I will quote the answer of Ma'am Marites. Legal as long as walang malasuang nangyayari in public. Again, I'm not encouraging you to fall in love with your student. Ha? To fall in love with your student. I'm just telling you what should be the answer for this one. And then, yes, legal because the student is 18 years old. If there is no force exerted by the teacher, correct. If there, there is not question, so that is still legal. So, bakit sa student ka pa na in love? Uh, sometimes, sabi, sabi nga dito sa, ano, sa may nang comment, mga, sana sa co-teacher mo na lang, sa teacher sa co-teacher mo na lang, sa teacher ka na lang, co-teacher mo na lang, uh, ibigay ang puso mo. <laughs> sa so, Unfair. Okay, yes, pwede na. So, pwede lang may in-love sa student. 
So sa ko teacher na lang. Huwag lang yung ano. Oh, basta pareho po na walang sabit. Pwede may love sa ko teacher pero pag may sabit, for example, married teacher, you fell in love with a married teacher. Ah, that is already illegal. Uh, you are already uh, shall I say, uh, what is the violation for that one? Could be adultery or concubinage. Diba? Legal, basta tuloy ang klase, hindi yung class absence si bebe ko wala. <laughs> Sabi naman Martes, legal, basta tuloy ang klase. Hindi yung class absence si bebe, wala tayong pasok today. Uh, there was a meme for this one. Uh, uh, wala tayong klase ngayon, class. I mean, uh, what is the highest score for today? Uh, uh, ikaw, bebe, anong score mo? Uh, 70. Okay, the highest the passing rate for Today is 70. <laughs> Just to give favor with the or the baby of the teacher. Metaw. Dili gina pwede. Uh, it's not uh, according to Mam Japan, dili gina pwede basta minyo ng teacher. It should not be if the teacher is already married. Again. Okay. Sige, we'll just continue with this one. Okay, so improve the teacher-student communication. Always remember, there should be a good relationship between the teacher and the student inside the classroom. Not the romantic relationship. Huh? Uh, what I'm telling is the good relationship, the friendly relationship between the teacher and the student. So, huwag masyadong dikit sa student rin. Baka mainlove ka sa student. Uh, as much as possible, especially yung mga high school teacher dito, yun talaga yung mga laging uh, nadadala ng mga senior high school student kasi mag magkalapit lang yung edad nila. So, as much as possible, uh, wag na sana. Kung pwede, uh, antayin na lang, graduate. Uh, Mag-break daw, sabi nito, Pani, doon ka na lang sa instructor. Hilig ma'am, sir, baby time mo na. Napapod, Diyos ko. <laughs> okay, we'll proceed. While waiting for Sir Gilmore. Asa naman si Sir Gilmore? Where are you now? Okay, my screen is not working. What's happening? Uh, difference between a pedagogical approach and pedagogical techniques. A pedagogical approach is the completely unified method of looking at teaching. It takes several elements from all the approaches of pedagogy which include, include constructivism, behaviorism, or liberationism. So there is a modification of uh behavior uh, i mean modification of behavior there is learning always remember that one if there is a change in behavior there is learning okay sir gilmore is already here uh i'll give the floor to sir gilmore and we will be talking more next meeting hopefully i'm very busy person because i am working in the review center at the same time i'm working in the department of education and also working part time my other businesses and this was my first time to have a short discussion because sir gilmore was uh, did not arrive on time so hopefully sir uh where are you now i'll be stop sharing this one for a while and sir gilmore will take over okay You wait for a while. Uh, Sir Gilmore is already here.
Uh, please start, Sir Gilmore. Yes, Doc. Uh, please share your screen. Okay, good evening. Okay, sir, good evening. Okay, so good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So we're now... Okay, so let's start now with... Okay, so this very afternoon, uh, this very evening, we are going to have a discussion on general education, most particularly on the life of Rizal works and his writings and basic mathematics. Okay. Let's begin now. Question number one. He was the first professor of Dr. Jose Rizal. Okay. So we're now talking about his first professor. So anybody? So the first professor of Jose Rizal in, take note, in Ateneo Municipal um, Doc Axel, excuse me, Doc. Yes, sir. I can hear feedback, Doc. From? I think from video. Feedback from? Nang makadungog. Ang ako ang... Kondok, murang nag-loading. Nag-loading akong... Sige lang, sir. Continue lang, sir. Pwede naman. Ah, pwede na. Ah. Ah, sige. Sige, Doc. Sige, Doc. Sige, sir. Okay. Now, okay, take note that Father Jose Borgos Zamora and uh, Gomez, that these three priests here. Were the no were known for the name Gomborza. Okay, they are associated during the Cavite mutiny. Okay, so take note that Father Jose Beach, this one, was his first professor in. Take note, Ateneo Municipal. Okay. And Ateneo Municipal, ladies and gentlemen, was known first as Escuela Pia. Okay. Please take note. Okay. So, when we are going to talk about the first professor of Jose Rizal in Ateneo Municipal Automatic, that's Beach. Okay. Gomborza, Jose Borgos, Jacinto Zamora, and Mariano Gomez are associated with the Cavite mutiny 
and Dr. Jose Rizal was only 11 years old. Okay, when they were sentenced to death. Okay. Let's proceed with number two. Okay, question number two. He was the defense counsel of Dr. Jose Rizal during, okay, during his, during his trial before the Council of War. Letter A, Felipe Ruiz Castillo. B. Jose Villaclara. Letter C. Defense counsel of Dr. Jose Rizal. Jury. And letter C. Stanislaw March. And letter D. Luis, Luis Taviel de Andrade. Okay. Number two. The defense counsel, when we talk about the defense counsel of Jose Rizal, okay, when he was, um, when he appeared before the council of war during his trial, his defense counsel was, okay, um, chat down your comments. Okay, for the new teachers, you can chat down, you can chat your comments, no, your answers. Okay, the answer is letter D. Okay. Mam Ruth Iguaras. Letter D. Luis Taviel D. Andrade. Okay. Now, take note that Dr. Jose Rizal was given a free counsel no, to appear or to defend Dr. Jose Rizal during his trial before the Council of War. Okay. Let's proceed. Question number three. Okay. Question number three. Question number three. He spent his noon recess taking private lessons in Spanish at this place. Okay. Now he was still under in Ateneo Municipal during this time. Okay. Letter A, UST or University of Santo Tomas. Letter B, Ateneo Municipal. Letter C, Santa Isabel College. Letter D, San Juan de Litran. Okay. Take note that when, when Rizal was in Ateneo Municipal, actually, this is where he finished his um, Bachelor of Arts, degree of Bachelor of Arts, okay? And during his stay in Ateneo Municipal, he was taking private lessons in Spanish, okay? So, saang... Iskwelahan. Okay. Ma'am Maria Teresa. Letter D. Ma'am Ortez. Letter D. Ma'am Ruth. Letter D. Ma'am Shirelle. Letter D. Ha Hassan. Letter A. Garinga. Letter D. Nove. Letter D. Panogol. UST. Okay. Take note. So, malalaman natin yung sagot. Okay. The answer is letter C. Take note that Dr. Jose Rizal was taking private lessons in Spanish at Santa Isabel College. Okay? At Santa Isabel College.
take note. Take note of that one. Um, many of you get the wrong answer. So, worth it ang paghihintay. Kasi you knew now, you know now that Dr. Jose Rizal was taking private lessons in Spanish at Santa Isabel College. Okay, let's proceed. Question number four. Okay. Now, let's proceed. Question number four. His inclination to it began since childhood and retained to his lifetime. Okay. Letter A, physics and mathematics. Letter B, letter B, botany and zoology. Letter C, reading and writing. Letter D, painting and sculpture. Okay. Take note that from childhood, Dr. Rizal loved these subjects. Okay. And up to his lifetime. The answer is letter B. Okay, so to those who are new, you know, newcomers, to those who just came in to our Zoom meeting, you can um, write down your comments, your answers. Okay, let's proceed to question number five. Okay. And I want you to prepare some pens also and some paper. Okay. That's question, question number five. Okay. Uh, Don Francisco and Doña Chudora were blessed with how many children? How many children? Okay. How many children? Letter A, three. Number five, B, letter B, five children. Number, letter C, 11. Letter D, 10. Okay. So how many children? Okay. The correct answer is letter D. Okay. First child was Saturnina. Second, Pashano. Third, Narcisa. Fourth, Olymp Olympia. Okay. Fifth was Lucia. Sixth, Maria. Seventh child, Jose Rizal. Okay. Eighth, Concepcion. Nine, Josefa. Tenth child was Trinidad. And the youngest was Soledad. Okay. How many children? Francisco and Doña Chedora had 11 children. Okay, let's proceed. Question number six. Okay. This one. According to Pashano, the brother of Rizal, the birth certificate of Jose, okay? The birth certificate of Jose, we're referring to Dr. Jose Rizal, bore this name 
because there was a time that when many Filipinos had the custom of adding the name of Godfather or Godmother to the child's name. Okay. The answer is Ria Lunda. Okay. Take note, ladies and gentlemen, that Ria Lunda, the name Ria Lunda, is not related, blood related to Rizal. The question now is, how did it become part? Because of her mother. Take note that um, in his letter to Blooming Treat, take note, Dr. Serizal gave the complete name of his mother. And in, her, in his letter, he um, sent to Blooming Treat that his mother was Chudora Alonzo Quintos Rialunda. Okay. Now, Rialunda, because there was a time when many Filipinos had this cost costume, okay, of adding the name of godmother or godfather to the child's name. So, meaning when Doña Chudora was being baptized, the name of her godmother or godfather was added. Rialunda. Okay. Take note. Let's proceed to question number seven. Okay. According to the account of Father Balaguer, shortly after this time, Josephine arrived accompanied by a sister of Rizal for the marriage ceremony. We're talking about specific time. Okay. Letter A. 6 a.m. Letter B, 6.30. Letter C, 5.30. And letter D, 3 a.m. Okay. The answer is... Okay. Mom Sherelle, you got the answer. Mom Aboimi, you got the correct answer. 6 a.m. Take note that 6.30 was the time where the art artillery of the army assembled. Okay? And at 5.30, Dr. Sirizal took his breakfast. And... 3 a.m., this was the time when he actually attended Mass and heard Mass and confessed for the fourth time. Take note. 3 a.m., Dr. Jose Rizal attended Mass and confessed for the first fourth time. Okay, he confessed for the fourth time. 6 a.m., Josephine arrived, accompanied by his sister, for the marriage ceremony. Okay. Let's proceed. Question number eight. Okay. This one, Dr. Jose Rizal's age when the Cavite mutiny transpired. Okay. Letter A, 10. Letter B, 11. 
letter C, 12. And letter D, 13. Okay. Ma'am Yuson, letter B, according to her. Ma'am Sherelle, letter B. Ma'am Delhi, letter B. The correct answer is Ma'am Nouvelle, letter B, correct? The answer is letter B. Okay, take note. There were 11 of them. Don Francisco Mercado and Junior Doña Chidora had 11 children. And Dr. Serizal was 11 also when Cavite mutiny transpired. Okay. Let's proceed. Take note. Okay. Question number nine. Question number nine. It was the vocational course that he took while studying philosophy and letters. Okay. Now, take note that... Oh, I'm so, sorry for that. Take note that Dr. Serizal studied philosophy and le letters in Santo to in University of Santo Tomas. Okay? And that was in the year 1877. Okay, what's your answer in number nine? Um, please, teachers, when you chat down your answer, please write the number and then the letter. Okay? So that it will be easy to track. Again, vocational course that he took while studying philosophy and letters. Okay. Take note that he finished his studies, his uh, studies in Ateneo Municipal in the year 1877. And then he enrolled in University of Santo Tomas for higher studies in April 1877. And take note, he was only seven, 16 years old. Okay. Okay, Ma'am Iguaras, Ma'am Nouvelle, you are correct. The answer was surveying. Okay. He was 16 years old when he enrolled at UST, okay, taking up philosophy and letters. Take note. He was taking up a vocational course in surveying. And take note, take note, at the age of 17, okay, at the age of 17, he passed the final examination but could not be granted the title because of being underage. Okay? The title was issued to him only on November 25, 1881. Okay? Okay. Ma'am Charlie Logroño. Okay, atong. Let's, let's uh, uh, go back to the first discussion in number nine. Okay. Okay, take note that Jose Rizal finished his studies in Ateneo Municipal in the year 1877. Okay. 
1877. And he wanted to have his higher studies in University of Santo Tomas. Okay. So in April 1877, in April 1877, take note, he was just 16 years old and he enrolled in philosophy and letters. And while taking up philosophy and letters, at the same time, he was taking a vocational course in surveying. Okay, take note that at the age of 17, at the age of 17, he passed all final examinations. But take note that the title was not granted to him because he was underage. Okay. Now, his title, no, relative to surveying, was issued on November 25, 1881. Mampanugol. Hinay ang signal. Yes. Even here. Okay, so ma'am and sir, I will advise um, just jot down and then review it tomorrow. Okay, let's proceed to question number 10. Question number 10, the university that Dr. Jose Rizal enrolled before he reached his 11th birthday and was sent to Manila. Okay. The university where he enrolled. Okay. Aw, oh, ma'am, panungol dili, panungol dili de ikaw si ma'am Queenie di ay. <laughs> Sorry for that. Okay. The correct answer is. Dr. Serizal enrolled before he reached his 11th birthday, Ateneo Municipal. Take note. Take note. Okay. This, these are informations that must need, that we need to memorize. Okay. Take note of that. Number 11. Okay. Rizal, who was only 16 years old, enrolled at UST. I mentioned that one a while ago. Taking the course because he was still uncertain as to what course he would take up. Okay. The answer is letter A. Take note, take note, take note, take note. Philosophy and letters. Take note of that one. Okay. Next question number 11. Ah, number 12, I mean. Okay. The usual signature, number 12, the usual signature of Leonor Rivera when she wrote a letter to Jose. Sige. Okay. Any any answers?
Any answer? Um, Mom Delhi. Her answer number 12 is letter A. Iguaras letter D. Okay. Mam Kadiveda, letter A. Mam Shire, letter A. Uh, Mam Panugo, letter B. Okay, the correct answer is letter D. Okay. Dear teachers, take note that, that this time is, is the usual signature of Leonor Rivera when she wrote a letter to Dr. Jose Rizal. Okay? Take note of that. Take note, teachers. Now, Leonor Rivera is, was a daughter of Rizal's uncle. Okay? The name of the father of Leonor Rivera is Antonio Rivera. Okay? Take note, Antonio Rivera. Let's proceed. Take note, teachers. The usual signature of Leonor Rivera. Next, let's proceed. Okay. Rizal submitted a poem which won first prize at Liceo Artistico Literario de Manila. What's your answer? Take note that the Liceo Artistico Literario de Manila held two contests. Okay. Letter A, El Consejo de los Dioses, Amor Patrio, Letter C, A la Juventud Filipina, Letter D, Mi Paid in Versos. The correct, oi, many of you got the answer correct, got the correct answer. The answer is Letter C. Okay. Take note that El Consejo de los Dioses was actually a play, okay? It's a play, okay? And he was only 18 years old when he submitted El Consejo de los Dioses, okay? While Allah Juventud Filipina was a poem during the first during the first contest no, held by the Liceo Artistico Literario de Manila in 1879. Take note of the date. 1879, Ala Juventud Filipina. Eighteen eighty to eighteen eighty one, El Consejo de los Dioses. Okay, Amor Patrio was written in Madrid when he was with a Hispanico Filipino. And also, okay. Dr. Jose Rizal, take note of this one, mentioned that the youth, the Filipi Filipino youth, is the fair hope of my motherland. He mentioned that one in Ala Joventud Filipina. Take note of this information that Ala Juventud Filipina won first prize. Okay? 
won first prize. And a silver pen. Okay, let's proceed. Here, the date of Jose Rizal's departure for his first trip to Europe. First trip to Europe. Okay, first trip to Europe. Letter A, May 1, 1882. Letter B, May 2, 1882. Letter C, May 3, 1882. Letter D, May 4, 1882. Ma'am Ruth Iguaras, letter C with a question mark. Why is that, ma'am? Okay. First trip to Europe. The correct answer is teachers. You can write down your answer, comment down your answers. Okay. Take note of this date. The answer is letter C. Okay. The answer is letter D, a letter C, I mean. So his first trip actually to Europe was on May 3, 1882. Okay. Now, May 1, May 1, May 1, 1882, take note that this was the time when Rizal prepared for his departure. Okay, this was also the date where um, Pasiano and his uncle Antonio agreed, no? agreed, had a, Antonio and Pasiano has an agreement, had an agreement. Okay. Okay. On the second day, So May 1, 1882, Rizal prepared for his departure. And on the second day, take note that they went to see the uh, Salvadora, which was anchored in the Pasig River. And also on May 2, 1882, Dr. Jose Rizal went to see um, Pedro Paterno. Okay. And this was also the time where Pedro Paterno gave him a letter for Mr. Esquivel. Okay. May 2, Dr. Jose Rizal met Pedro A. Paterno and gave him the letter for Mr. Esquivel. Okay. Mr. Esquivel actually is an important Filipino resident in Spain. Take note. And on the third day, on the third day, Dr. Serizal left. No, had his trip to Europe. Okay. Next is question number 15. Okay. This one, the amount given by Pashano to Jose for the trip. No? Binigyan ng pabaon ni Pasiano si Jose for his first trip. Okay. Okay, letter A. 256 pesos. Letter B. 257 
pesos. Letter C, 356 pesos. Letter D, 350. Okay. Okay. Uh, comment down your answers, teachers. Mam Ma Ruth, letter A. Mam Ma Panugo, letter D. Mam Ma Yuson, letter D. Mam Ma Charlie, letter C. Mam Ma Agalias, letter D. Mam Ma Bungabung, letter D. Mam Ma Kanonego, B. Mam Ma Deli, letter A. What's the answer? Take note that Pashano gave Dr. Jose Rizal 356 Mexican peso. 356 Mexican pesos. Take note of that information. Okay. This was given on the first day no? when he prepared for his trip to Europe. First trip to Europe, 356 Mexican pesos was given by Pashano to Dr. Jose Rizal on May 1, 1882. Okay. Let's proceed. Okay. This one. The many visits. We have question number 16 now. The many visits that Jose made that day of his first trip to Europe were proofs that there was nothing secret about his trip. It was a secret only to whom? Okay. Number 16, teachers. It was a secret only to whom? Teachers, take down your, uh, comment down your answers. Just try. Try, try, try. Mam Iguaras, letter C to his parents. Any answer? Mam mm. Panugo, letter A. Mam Logroño, letter A. It was a secret to the Filipinos in Spain. Mam Bungabong. Mam Agalias. Okay, the answer is letter C. Okay, take note that his first trip to Europe was a secret only to his parents. Take note. Take note of that. It's not a secret to his friends. It's not even a secret to the Filipinos in Spain because take note that Pedro Paterno even gave Dr. Usirizal a letter for Mr. Um, Esquivel. Ma'am Panugol, Liguac, imong answer, but it's okay. Okay? It's okay. At least you've learned something this evening. Okay. Sige. Let's proceed. Question number seven. The person his first love was engaged to. Oh, my question. Who was the first woman whom Rizal loved? Any answer for that one? Take note that Rizal was first in love to Segunda Katigbak. Okay? Take note, he was first in love to Segunda Katigbak. 
Mm. And si Gonda Katibak was engaged already to Manuel Luz. Okay. Now, how come that these two develop these intimate um, feelings for each other? Okay. Take note that the brother of Segunda Katigbak happened to be a friend of Rizal. And Segunda Katigbak was a classmate of Olympia, which was the sister of Dr. Jose Rizal. Take note. No? But he found out later that Segunda went to the same college with his sister. Okay? But he tried to keep away in deference to her being engaged. No? And Segunda Katigbak was engaged to Manuel Luz. Uh, Ma'am Panugol, uh, very good. Okay, naka-answer na yun kag letter D. Okay. Take note. Okay? So, it's not Mr. Esquivel because Mr. Esquivel is in Spain. Antonio Rivera was the father of Leonor Rivera. So, Manuel, Manuel Luz. Okay. Next question. Because of the grace of Segunda Katigbak that captivated no, Dr. Serizal. Dr. Serizal was capti captivated by the beauty of Segunda Katigbak. No? She made a, a pencil, pencil sketch for her. In turn, Segunda Katigbak embroidered blank on his hat. Okay. Ma'am, number 18. Ma'am and sir, can you comment down your answers? Sige, try. Answer. Number 18, letter A, rose. Letter B, a cross. Letter C, a signature of Segunda Katigbak. Letter D, an image of the Virgin Mary. Ma'am Ruth Iguaras rose with a question mark. Why is that? The answer is letter, letter A. Take note. Take note that Rizal made a Pencil sketch of Segunda Katigbak. Okay. She, in turn, embroidered a rose no, on the hat of Dr. Jose Rizal. Okay, let's proceed. Okay. Question 19. The last but failed to be published article of Rizal in Jaryong Tagalog. Okay. The last but failed to be published mm -hmm. in Jaryong Tagalog. Okay. The last but failed Number 19, letter D, Ma'am Panugol. Try your answer. Comment down your answers. Let's try. Mm -hmm. The last but failed.
Okay, ma'am. Agalias, letter C. Ma'am Agalias, letter C. Ma'am Yuson, letter A. Okay, comment down your answers. Okay, take note. Okay. Mom Chan, letter D. Mom Jarge, letter D. Mom Logroño, letter C. The answer is Mom Bungabong, letter B. Mom Novel, letter D. The, th the last, actually, um, Dr. Rizal had written three articles. The answer is letter A. So, Ma'am Yuson and Ma'am Iguaras got the answer. Take note. Reviseta de Madrid. Okay, take note. Take note of that. Now let's discuss further. Okay. So when Dr. Rizal was in um, Barcelona, okay, it was in Barcelona actually. Liguak nasad sir oy, ma'am panugol. Sagdilang. It's okay, ma'am. Now you learn something. Okay. It was in Barcelona where Dr. Jose Rizal wrote a nationalistic essay entitled Amor Patrio or Love of Country. Take note that Amor Patrio was written in Barcelona. Okay? And he gave it to his friend. Take note. He gave it to his friend, Basilio Moran. Basilio Moran was the publisher of the Jaryong Tagalog on August 20, 1882. Okay? Take note that the Amor Patrio was written in Barcelona. And Amor Patrio is a nationalistic essay. Nationalistic essay. Published in Jaryong Tagalog. He gave the essay to Basilio Moran and was published in the Jaryong Tagalog on August 28, 1882. Take note. He used his pen name Laong Laan originally written in Spanish. Okay. Amor Patrio. Dr. Jose Rizal used Laong Laan as a pen name when he wrote Amor Patrio. Take note. Okay, let's discuss now the second article. Okay, second article. The second article was Los Viajes, okay, or Travels. Okay, it's the second article in Jaryong Tagalog, still written by Dr. Jose Rizal. And, <clears throat> excuse me. The last but failed to be published article is the Revis, Revista de Madrid or the Review of Madrid. Okay. Now let's discuss this option C, the option C, a la señorita. Okay. You know, Rizal is uh, a lover boy shall we say. Okay? 
Jose Rizal sometimes uh, spent his time visiting the home of um, a former liberal-minded Spanish civil governor of Manila, okay. Pablo Ortega. Okay. And Pablo Ortega had two daughters, namely Pilar and Consuelo. And it was Consuelo who again awakened the lonely heart of Dr. Jose Rizal. Okay. Take note that ala senorita, option C. Ala senorita was written on August 23, 1883. Okay. Again, ala senorita was written on August 23, 1883. Okay? And it's dedicated actually to one of the daughters, Consuelo. Okay. A la señorita, dedicated to Consuelo, the daughter of Pablo Ortega. Okay. okay, take note. Let's proceed. Oh. Dr. Jose Rizal completed his studies and obtained the degree of licentiate in philosophy and letters. Okay. Philosophy and letters. This gave him the qualifications to become blank. A. Honoris Causa. B. Doctor of Philosophy. C. Professor in Humanities in any Spanish university. Letter D. President of Hispanico-Filipino in Madrid. Okay. Before I'm going to show you the answer, take note that he took um, this study in uh, Madrid, okay, in Madrid. Okay, take note. And during this time, when he completed philosophy and letters, you know, when he was finished, he, when he already obtained his degree in philosophy and letters, this was also the time that he finished the degree of licentiate in medicine at the university. Universidad Central de Madrid. Okay. Mam. Panogo letter B. Mam Bote letter B. Mam Agalias letter B. Mam Tadaya letter B. Huh? Mam Canonego letter C. Okay. Very good. Nakabasa na ako correct answer. The answer is letter C. Okay, take note. Take note. Teachers, this was the time that he completed his medical course. Okay, take note that upon his completion and obtained, and he already obtained the degree of licentiate in philosophy and letters. This was also the time that he also completed his medical course and was conferred the degree of licentiate, licentiate in, in medicine okay, by the Universidad Central. Di Madrid. 
But, there's a but. Could not be given his diploma because he could not present his thesis. But, he had a qualification to become professor in humanities, humanities in any Spanish university because he obtained his degree of licentiate in philosophy and letters. Take note. Let's proceed. Question number two. Oh, if you could re still remember, let's test your retention. Okay. I've mentioned this one, I think, in question number 18 or I think in question number 19. He was the publisher of Jari Yung Tagalog and a friend of Dr. Jose Rizal. Okay, let's see. Teachers, write down the, chat down your comments. Wow, Ma'am Logroño, letter D. Ma'am Yuson, letter D. Ma'am Panugol, where's your answer? Very good, Ma'am, letter D. Okay. The correct answer is Basilio Moran. Take note. The publisher of Jarin Tagalog and a friend of Jose Rizal, Basilio Moran. Okay. Let's proceed. Okay, let's proceed. Question number 22. Question number 22. After five years of memorable sojourn in Europe, he returned, he returned uh, to the Philippines in August 1887, February 3, 1888, February 8, 1888, April 28, 1888. Okay. After five years of memorable sojourn in Europe, Dr. Jose Rizal returned to the Philippines. Write down, uh, comment down your answers. Mam Logroño, let us see with a peace sign. With a peace sign. Mam Igueras, question mark and then letter D. Okay, your answer. Mam Tadaya, letter A with a question mark. Why is that? Okay, not sure. Okay, the answer is take note. Let's let's count the date. Okay, let's count the date. He was in Spain August 20, 1882. 1882. Take note. Five years. 80, the year, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87. Okay, so the answer is letter A, Mom, Delhi. Very good. Okay, take note. Okay, so August... 1887, he was um, warned by Pashano and other relatives not to return home. But Dr. Jose Rizal was really determined to return to the, here to the Philippines because first, first, he wanted to operate the cataract of his mother. Okay, that's one. 
Oh, Ma'am Logroño, tagan-tagan lang mi ani sir kay Bugo Judko Grizal. <laughs> Ma'am, it's because we need to memorize the dates and the events and many other things, no? Uh, we really need to study life, works, and writings of Dr. Serizal. Okay. Okay. August 1887, he returned to the Philippines. Okay. Take note, February 3, 1888. Ma'am Logroño, just review and other teachers, please review this one later. Take note that the date, February 3, February 3, February 1883. This was the time that um, after a short stay of six months in Calamba, this was the time that he left Manila for Hong Kong. Okay. Take note. Mam Jards, my rason. Ah. Oh. Take note, February 3, 1888, this was the time when he left Manila for Hong Kong. Tabangi san mig answer sa imuhang life, oy. <laughs> okay. Um, teachers, we need to be happy, not in stress. Uh, sir Arnel, patabang daw sila tubag sa ilahang kinabuhi, sir. <laughs> okay. Take note. February 3, eh, February 1888, this was the time when Rizal left Manila for Hong Kong. Okay? On board the Safiro. Okay. He arrived, he arrived in Hong Kong February 8, 1888. Okay. Let's go back to the date. Go back to the date. 1882, he was in Madrid. After five years, he returned to the Philippines, August 1887. Um, six months after, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. Six, six months. F six months when he arrived, February 3, 1888. He left Manila for Hong Kong. And on February 8, 1888, he arrived in Hong Kong. And he stayed actually at Victoria Hotel. Take note of that one. Oh, mom. Panugol, patabang tas kinabuhi ni Rizal na natay contact niya. Um, ma'am, I will recommend teachers if you have time um go online or if you can visit any um national national bookstore. Okay? Actually, I am using the book of Anacoreta Purino. Okay, Dr. Anacoreta Purino. Okay. For me, it's the best. Okay. Okay. Let's proceed. February 8, 1888, he arrived in Hong Kong and stayed at Victoria Hotel. Sir, what about April 28, 1888? Teachers, this date, if you, if you, you should remember this one, April 28, 1888, this was 
the first time Rizal saw America. Okay? Take note. April 28, 1888, this was the first time Rizal saw America. Okay, he arrived in San Francisco April 28, 1888. Okay. Okay. Teachers, hopefully there's just a little bit of retention because we can review it over and over again. Okay? You just review it over and over again. Let's proceed. Okay. Oh, Ma'am Panug Panugul. Kaya pa, Ma'am Jarge. Okay. Excuse me. Question number 23. Upon Rizal's arrival in August 1887, he received a letter from Governor General Blank. Okay. Governor General Blank. Ma'am George, kaya pa. Good. That's the spirit. Ma'am Iguaras, letter D, Ramon Blanco. Take note. Again, Rizal arrived on August in August 1887. Okay, after five years, he was in Europe 1882, and then after five years, he came back. He returned to the Philippines August 1887. February 3, 1888, he left Manila for Hong Kong, and February 8, 1888. He arrived in Hong Kong and stayed at Victoria Hotel. Okay. April 28, 1888. This was the date Dr. Jose Rizal saw America. He arrived at San Francisco. Now, when he arrived in August 1887, he received a letter from Governor General Blank. Okay. Okay, take note. Letter A, Pula Vieja. This, letter B, Dispujol. Letter C, Ter Terrero. Letter D, Ramon Blanco. Mam Ma Yuson B, Mam Ma George D, Mam Ma Austria D, Mam Ma Candelaria D, Mam Ma Novel D. Oh. Okay. Mam Ma Panogo letter D 23 Mam Ma Chan letter C. Mam Ma Chan, congratulations to you. The correct answer is letter C. Okay. Take note, teachers, that when um, he arrived on that day, he received a letter from Governor General Emilio Terrero requesting him to go to, the, to Malacanang. Okay? Because Governor General... Okay. Ma'am Elma Leksiones nakatama sa wa na ilhi. <laughs> now you know. Okay? It was Governor General Emilio Terrero who gave Dr. Jose Rizal a letter requesting him Requesting him to go to Malacanang. Okay.
Take note. Oh. Sabi ni Ma'am Leksyones, add one out. Oh. Pula Vieja associated with the death of Rizal because he was the one who signed the approval of the death sentence of the Council of War no? for the execution of Dr. Jose Rizal. This Pujol associated with the deportation of Rizal to the Pitan. Okay. Teachers, take note. It was also Yolohio Dispohol who annulled who annulled the deportation of his father and his brother, including the deportation of his brother-in-law. Take note. Very good, Ma'am Bachansila. Pula Vieja, nagpapatay. Dispohol, nagpatapun. Okay. <laughs> uh, Ma'am Panugol, tungod yung pula vieja, mauni, nag-study tag Rizal, sao na lang. Okay, take note. Teachers, this poll is not only associated with the deportation of Rizal to the Pitan. Okay? He was also associated for the annulment of the deportation of his father and his brother, including his brother-in-law. Okay. Let's proceed. Take note. Let's proceed to question number 24. Okay. Question number 24. According to accusation. Wow, ma'am, leksyonis. Answer na dahil yun da. Number 24, letter D. Okay. This book of Rizal praises the memory of the priest who died by the gar garot during the Cavite mutiny. Sorry for the spelling sa Cavite. Nahimu na nung Cavite. Okay. The correct answer is letter D. Okay. Take note. El filibusterismo praises the memory of the three priests, Gomborza. Okay. Okay. Let's proceed. Number 25. Okay. Number 25. At 6.30 a.m., okay, the squad of artillery soldier was formed, preceded by a, a bugle and a drum. They took the Paseo de Maria Cristina, now called. Oh, ano nang tawag? Letter A, Paseo de Magallanes. Paseo de Entramuros. Paseo de Entramuros. Paseo de Bonifacio. Paseo de Rojas. Okay. Paseo de Maria. Now called. Now called. Okay. Oh, let's, 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 let's try to answer. Comment down your Answer, Iguara, Mam Iguaras B, Mam Jards B, Mam Agalias B, 
Mam Kadiveda B, Mam Nouvel B, Mam Yuson B. Okay, okay. Okay. So, take note. At 6.30 a.m., the squad of the artillery soldiers was formed. Rizal came out bound from elbow to elbow during this time, okay? December 30, 1896. Okay. Together with him were the two uh, Jesuit priests, Father Villa Clara, Father March, and his defense counsel, uh, Luis Taviel, okay, Andrade Taviel. The squad surrounded them all and they took the Paseo de Maria Cristina, now called, answer, Mam Chan, Mam Cristuta, correct. Letter C, Paseo de Bonifacio. Paseo de Bonifacio. Take note of this one, teachers. Paseo de Maria Cristina. Now called Paseo de Bonifacio. Take note. Okay, very good. Mam Bachansila, Mam Panugol, Mam Iguaras, and the rest of the teachers who answered B. Maria de Cristina. Paseo de Bonifacio. Take note. Okay. Let's proceed. He was the parish priest of Tundo who discovered the Katipunan which precipitated the outbreak of hostilities. Oh. Let's see. Um, dear teachers, it's okay if by this time we got the Liguac answers, okay? Take note that because that's the reason why we are here, because we wanted to gain more knowledge, okay? We wanted to add something, okay? Father... Very good. Ah, Father Mariano Hill. Okay, he was the parish priest of Tondo who discovered the Katipunan. Okay, very good. Uh, uh, it seems that this question is very easy. This one. It's very impossible for us to commit wrong it, it to commit a mistake. Okay, in this item. Number 27, Doña Chudora, whose eyes suffered from cataract, led Rizal to shift his studies to what area of interest? Okay. Medicine, poetry, painting, sculpture. The answer is very good. Letter A. Question, where did he finish his licensure in medicine? Oh, saan nag-aral si Rizal? Saan niya nakuha yung kanyang degree of licensure in medicine? Ah, where did he co complete this study? Okay, can you, can you comment on your answer, teachers? Okay, take note that he shift studies, his studies, no, from, from uh, philosophy and letters 
no? from his other field of interest no? to medicine. Okay. Where did he completed his medical course in UST? No? In licensed in medicine. Take note. He completed his medical course and was conferred the degree of licensure in medicine by the Universidad Central de Madrid. Very good, ma'am. Universidad Central de Madrid. Ma'am Cristuta and Ma'am Iguaras, aboy me. Very good. Specific Universidad Central de Madrid. Okay. Ma'am Panugol, okay ralagig marong. No, at least you've tried and that's why you're here. Okay, very good. <laughs> okay, let's proceed. Number Question number 28. Okay. Let's let's test your um, retention. Okay, we've also mentioned this one. Okay, at this age, at this age, take note. He passed the final examination in surveying, but could not be granted the title because of being underage. Ah. Wow, very good. The answer is letter B, 17. Okay. 16, he was 16 when he enrolled at UST. Okay, he enrolled in UST. Okay, taking the course on philosophy and letters. At the same time, he was studying also a vocational course in surveying okay and he excelled he excelled in all the subjects very good 17 years old he passed all the examination but the title was not given because he was underage e kailan binigay yung kanyang titulo no it was given on November 25, 1881. November, November 25, 18. Okay, November 25, 1881. Okay, the title was issued on November 25. 1881. Take note of that. Ma'am, leksyonis ba't siya sila? Gado ka na day, ma'am. Gamay na lang, ma'am. Okay. More energies. More energy. Let's proceed. Let's proceed. Question number 29. This was his second letter. Written in Hong Kong on June 20, 1892. Second letter. Second letter. Take note. Okay. This was his second letter. Okay. Written in Hong Kong on June 20, 1892. Which in the final words of the letter constitute poetic quintessence of his patriotism question to whom this letter was addressed to mom iguaras b mom leksyonis batsansila letter a mom logroño letter b any Answer, comment down your answer, teachers.
Now, when he was in Hong Kong, he has he had written um, three letters actually. Okay, two on June 20, 1892, and one on June 21, 1892. Ma'am, Panugo, letter B, Ma'am Hanji, letter A, Ma'am Chan, letter A. So the correct answer, correct answer is letter A. Ma'am Bachan Sila, I think you're you're not sleepy because you got the correct answer. Okay. Ma'am Yuson, A, correct. Ma'am Chan, Ma'am Hanji, letter A. Very good. Okay. Take note. This was quote. I'm quoting the letter of Dr. Jose Rizal, addressed to the addressed to the Filipinos, no, written in Hong Kong, June 20, 1892. Okay. To the Filipinos. Quote. I have always love my unfortunate motherland. Whatever be my fate, I shall die blessing her and wishing for the dawn of her redemption. That's poetic quintessence of his patriotism. <laughs> Ingun si Ma'am Batchansila, di pa kuno sure to. Okay. Sige. Now sure na gyud ka, Ma'am. Now that the second letter was addressed to the Filipinos. The first letter actually was addressed Take note. First letter when he was in Hong Kong. June 20, was addressed to his beloved parents, brothers, and friends. Okay? Let's proceed. Number 30. The blank a religious order examined the text of Noli Mitanghere and found it to be subversive of public order. Okay. Now, teachers, can you still remember that on August 1887, five years after no, he was in Madrid, he returned to the Philippines, August 1887. He was given a letter by governor general governor general emilio terrero he was invited to the palace right and he was informed of the charges given to him you no know? a charges brought by a religious order because they said that they found out that the no limitangheri is subversive to public order. What's the answer? Letter A, Jesuits. B, Dominicans. C, Recollects. D, Augustinians. Okay. Mamliksiones, Bachensila, letter B again with a question mark. Nanu <laughs> mangyuna, ma'am. Okay. Sige, teachers. Ma'am Canonego, D. Ma'am Cristituta, letter B. Ma'am Iguaras, letter D. Okay? Take note that um, during this time, no, a religious order examined the text of the No Limit of No Limit Angere. Okay? Ikaw na mo correct, sir, sa tamang answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the answer is 
the Dominicans. No? The Dominicans actually are very hostile to Dr. Sirizal. No, can you still can you remember that even during the execution of Dr. Sirizal, Jesuits was there. Two Jesuit priests was with him. Where with him? Sorry. Okay. Okay. Now, the Dominicans actually, it was a religious order. They were the ones who examined the text and they even ordered no, the, that the importation, the reproduction, the circulation of the book be um, absolutely prohibited. Okay? It was the Dominican order. Okay. Mam Kanunego, bagsak di ay dili oy, no? I said that is why we are here. That's why you spend your time, your effort, and your money, no? Here in LCTC, we're here to help you. Okay, Mam Kanunego, and the rest of all the LCTC reviewer. Reviewees. Mm, that's why we're here. We are having a discussion. Okay. We'll pray for all of you. Okay. Take note. Again, the Dominicans examined the text. And they were the ones who found out that the Noli Metangere is subversive to sub versive to public order. And they were also the order who said and ordered that the importation, reproduction, circulation of the book be absolutely prohibited. Okay? So you should you simply need to review it over and over again. Okay. Next. Oh. Life of Rizal Palangani. Nalipong nako. lang, ma'am. Again, I said we just simply need to review it over and over and over again. And it will be be simply part of your memory. Wapay math. Hapit na ma'am ang math. Okay. Sige. Now, can you still remember that in question number 29, here in question number 29, I've said that when he was still in Hong Kong, June 28, 92, he actually wrote two letters. Okay? The first was addressed to his beloved parents, brothers, and uh, friends. The second was addressed to the Filipinos. Okay, here's the question. The first letter of Rizal written on June 20, 1892 when he was in Hong Kong two days before his departure for Manila, has been called black. Okay. Okay. Teachers, uh, Ma'am Bachancila, give your guess. Si Ma'am Panugul, wala na, asa naman ni? Ma'am. Letter C, declaration of declaration of love, Mam Samson, political testament, maokonoy nalahi. <laughs> okay, the correct answer is letter A. Take note, the first letter addressed to my beloved parents, brothers, and friends is also called as a political testament. Take note. 
Okay. Take note of that. This, they constitute what has been called Rizal's political testament. Okay. Number political testament, okay? Number 32. Number 32. Sadihang gishur na mali nagyud noon. <laughs> Ma'am, leksyones, matyan sila. That's why we're here. <coughs> That's why we're here again. Okay. 16 years after Rizal's bones were retrieved by his sister on December 29, 1912, the ivory urn with Rizal's remains was carried in a procession to this place in Intramuros, a symbol of Spanish rule. Ah, that I answer. Gablerd na pananawan, Ma'am Jarge. Ay, Ma'am. Sige, hapit na. Okay. Letter A. Ayuntamiento. Question, who was the sister of Rizal? Ma'am, White Trade Center, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Sister of Rizal. No? Who made all efforts to recover, to found his remains. Okay. It was... Narcisa. Take note. Narcisa. <laughs> Take note. Narcisa. Okay? Narcisa. Sir, arnsiri na lang. Dili na jud makayo og bintot. Na. Unsao na lang. Okay. Ma'am Panugol, may tagmaayo na na imong Matagtiki. Okay. Question. It was the destiny of Rizal. Okay. Ma'am, aboy min, abot naman tagsisa, ma'am. Naunsa naman ta? <laughs> his destiny. It was his destiny. Okay. Okay, okay. It was the destiny of Rizal. Visitor on a trip. Very good. Uy, si Ma'am Araneta, triple D, 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 yud. Savior of his country. Take note. Destiny of Rizal, Savior of his country. Okay. Sleep break sa tanin nyo, sir. Um, after sa Rizal, we'll have... Two minutes lang. Okay, marag mainom po kong tubig. Okay. Number 34. He was a Filipino lawyer residing in London who made efforts to save his friend, Jose Rizal. 34. Answer. A Filipino lawyer. A. Cayetano Arellano B. Ferdinand Blumentritt C. Jose Regidor uh, D. Trinidad Pardo H. De Tavera Ma'am Araneta, double B, B, B. Naunsa naman na? Ma'am Batsansela, B with a question mark. 
Ma'am Logroño, letter C with with pinakatawa. The correct answer is letter C. Okay. Ma'am Panugo, ligwak. Take note. Residing in London, a lawyer that wanted to save Dr. Jose Rizal was Jose Regidor. Take note. Caetano Arellano was the first um, chief justice okay, during the civil government. Okay. Ferdinand Blumentritt was the friend of Rizal in Europe. Okay. Trinidad Pardo, H. de Tavera were one of the three pro-American Filipinos during the expansion of the Taft Commission. Take note. Again, he was a Filipino lawyer residing in London who made efforts to save Rizal, Jose Rigidor. Cayetano Arellano, the first chief justice during the civil, gov civil government of the American period. Ferdinand Blumentritt, a European friend of Dr. Jose Rizal. Trinidad Pardo H. de Tavera was one of the three pro-Americans no? who became part member of the Taft Commission. Hmm. Okay, take note. This one, number 35. The meaning of Laong Laan, Jose Rizal's pseudonym. The meaning of Laong Laan, Jose Rizal's pseudonym. Okay. Willing and able. God's will, predestined, happy, and ready. Mam Bachensila, see with the question mark again. Excuse me for a while, teachers. Okay. Okay. The meaning of laung laan. The answer is letter C. Predestined. Okay. Mam Jarge. Mali na lahat answer ko. He, he, he. But it's okay. Laong laan, predestined. Okay. Laong laan, result pseudonym is predestined. Okay. Ma'am Novet, uh, Ma'am Lixones, you got the correct answer but with a question mark. Okay. Paano salit? You'll be still be doubtful. Mali na sad. <laughs> it's okay. No? Now you learned something. Just review it. Okay? And everything will be part of our memory. <clears throat> Flowing water. Isure na nako, sir. Kana. Okay. Number 36. Aydara. Ma'am Bachansila. This is what you are waiting for. Math. Okay. Sige. Um, teachers, give me two minutes. I'll get some water. Excuse me for a while.
Okay. Madungog na ko, teachers. Si Ma'am Chan, 36, nakaihap na siya. Okay. Si Ma'am Judge po, nakaihap na. Uh, he was they were able to sum up already. Okay, thank you. Loud and clear. Thank you. Okay. The sum, number 36. Let's proceed. Yes, ma'am. Laban lang. Okay. No? Passing the lead needs effort. Okay. So, yesterday, I was there you know, during the take, oath taking and I was very happy. On September 2023, all LCTC reviewees will pass the exam. Let exam. By the grace of God. Number... 36 is arithmetic series, letter A, number 51. Okay. It's very easy. You just simply need to add it, no? all the number, number, series of number. Okay. But what if no? the given numbers... No, in the arithmetic series are higher or greater than given here in number 36. Okay. What about this one? Only the first term and the eighth term is given. So first term, second term, third term, fourth term, the fifth term, the sixth term, the seventh term, are all missing and then you are tasked to sum the series, the arithmetic series from first term to the eighth term. Huh? So na na sir. Okay. Let's see. Okay, take note. Here in number 36, it will be very easy because we have here our first term in arithmetic series. First term, one. Second term, four. That's five plus seven. That's twelve plus ten. That's twenty-two plus three. That's thirty-five plus sixteen. Fifty-one. Now, what about this one? Teachers, can you write your, uh, chat down your answers. Letter A, 176. Letter B, 175. Letter C, 167. Letter D, 157. Wa na akong brain cells. Nalipong na. <laughs> okay. No? There's a technique for this one. And please, teachers, screenshots or please um, take down notes, okay? Because this is part of GE math, sub math, okay? The answer is letter A, 176. How are we going to get the answer? Given only the first term and the eighth term. C na lang, sir. Uy, ayaw po rin tao nang nalang. Uy. Okay, here's the solution. Take note. Take note of this one. The sum of the arithmetic series whose first term is 8 and the eighth term is 36. Okay. S sub N equals N over 2 times no? the quantity of A sub 1 plus A sub N quantity. Okay. Take note. Of this one, take note, teachers, screenshots if, if screenshot if possible, okay, or take down notes. According to my former professor in college, the faintest ink is way greater than the sharpest memory. 
I think it was a Chinese proverb, no? and shared it to us. Faintest ink is way greater than the sharpest memory. S is the sum of the arithmetic series. N. N here is the number of terms. There were eight terms. N, so substitute eight, because the question, there were eight terms. The last term is 36 and found in the eighth term. Okay. And A here stands for the um, value of the term. A sub one, that's the value of the first term, which is eight plus A sub N value of the last term, which is 36. We simply need to divide N eight. No, the number of terms, 8 divided by 2, that's 4. 8 plus 36, that's 44. And 4 times 44 is 176. Can you please send some heart reaction or thumbs up if you knew now how to solve for the sum of the arithmetic series using the formula? Whoa, thank you. Okay. Uh, I think I did discuss this one two years ago when I was still handling math one and math 11, a uh, math 10. Uh, that's college one and summer for college two. Okay, take note. Some of arithmetic series. I said this will be easy if we are tasked to find the sum of the arithmetic series. If all the terms in a series are given values of the term, but here, if we are given only the first and the last term, use the formula S sub N equals N over 2 times the quantity of A sub 1 plus A sub N quantity. That's it. Very easy. Okay. Nagkadugo talaga ang brain ang math. Nakakadugo talaga ng brain ang math. Ma'am Makalino, kaya mo yan. Pag kaya ni Kuya Kim, kaya mo yan. Kaya natin to. Okay. Uh, I remember when we first lectured math, somebody asked for a solution. Now we have here the solution. Okay. My, they said September licensure examination contains a lot of math subject and I look at the uh, US there are quite a number of math items okay so that's why we really need to start this one and including Rizal okay S sub N equals N over 2 times the quantity of A sub 1 plus A sub N quantity N stands there as the number of terms okay Sana konti lang talaga ang math na lalabas. Padaghana ang math because you're here learning mathematics. Okay? Joke kami tao, Ma'am Makalino. Okay. Hopefully, all math uh, questions will be easy. Okay. Let's proceed to question number 38. Okay. Here, I said... In item number 36, it will be easy because the numbers are a little bit smaller. In number 37, only the first term and the eighth term were given. In number 38, malalaki yung numero. No? It will take time. So, use the formula again. Sige, the first term is 56. All you have to do is just to count the number of terms. Um, teachers, term will be used to refer the values, okay, in an arithmetic series. 56 is the first term and 320 is the last term. Let's count the number of terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay. Uh, I did make sure because baka nalito ako no, sa pag-count ng terms. So 12. Okay. So S sub N, that's 12. 12 divided by 2, that's 6. Um, A sub 1, that's 56. A sub N, or the last term, is 320. 320 plus 
56, that's 376. And 6 times 376, that, that's 2,256. So the answer is 2,256. Okay? All we need to do is to use the formula. Okay? I think it will be easy to multiply this three-digit um, multiplicand and a one-digit multiplier rather than adding these 12 terms. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Marites, Austria, short method in adding arithmetic series. Okay. Take note of the term arithmetic series. Okay. Because we also have the Fibonacci sequence, um, the harmonic sequence. There are many of them. We even have um, arithmetic sequence. Okay. This is only applicable to arithmetic series. Okay. Basta math, murag di man yud mag-cooperate akong brain. Uy, sagdi lang ma'am, mag-cooperate na. Try. Okay. We simply need to push ourselves further, a little bit further, every day. Okay. Iman e, Ma'am Austria, this formula is only for arithmetic series. Okay. We have Fibonacci sequence. We have harmonic series. We have uh, arithmetic sequence. And if we have time, we're going to discuss that one, but maybe we will, not today, but uh, during our next, le next lecture, okay? Okay, number 39. Here. How many different ways can seven students be seated for a groovy if only four seats are available. Okay. How many different ways? Okay. The answer here is not 28. Sorry for the wrong answer. The answer is not 28. Okay. I'll show the solution later. Okay. Seven students, four chairs. Okay, how many different ways can they be seated for a groovy, groovy having four seats available? Okay, we have here the answer. It's the permutation of objects N in times R. That's the permutation. So this is the formula for permutation. Just remember this one. N factorial. Ang basa ng itong exclamatory point factorial n factorial over the quantity of n minus r quantity factorial okay take note things or objects times four times here we have simply use the formula n n r 7 n 4R. Okay, teachers, take notes, screenshot, take down notes. 7 factorial over um, 7 minus 4 quantity factorial. Okay. When we say 7 factorial, we are going to multiply the number lower to it until 1. Okay, for example, 7 factorial, that's 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times <coughs> times 2 times 1. 7 minus 4, that's 3. 3 factorial. Okay? Take note. So 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 divided by 3 times 2 times, uh, I mean, 3 times 2 times 1, 6, right? Okay, that's 840 times, okay? And I'm going to show you another technique 
so that you will not be you will no longer be dividing numbers okay if possible okay simply cross out 3 times 2 times 1 3 times 2 times 1 cancel out 3 cancel out 2 cancel out 1 so the remaining will be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 the result will still be 840 times okay that will be 7 factorial the result will be 7x 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial or 3 exclamatory point that's 3 factorial now remember here in our divisor or our um, denominator 7 minus 4 is 3 so that's 3 factorial 3 factorial divided by 3 factorial cancel out okay cancel out cancel cancel that one cancel that one cancel that one cancel that one okay okay so that will be seven times six times sagdi lang ni akong kuan ha kay dili um touch screen ang laptop ako raning hinuwaman taon 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 money result times 3 factorial divided by take note here 7 minus 4 that's 3 3 factorial right Okay, so this one will be cancelled out. Okay, take note. Take note of that. So the result, 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 only. The result will still be 840 times. Okay, so... Um, we now have... How many times or how many ways can seven students be seated for a groupie if only four seats are available? 840 times. Seven times six times five times four times three factorial over seven minus four. Okay, four times, man. Quantity factorial, cancel and three factorial. The result, 840. Okay? Okay. Take note. Okay. Now let's proceed. Just take down notes. Okay. And review. Okay. Let's proceed. Okay. Number 40. Okay, here, how many four letters, four letter word can be formed from the word silver? The word silver here has one, two, three, four, five, six letters. Okay, how many? Oh, use the same, the same formula. That's the permutation of an object. in r times equals n factorial over n minus r quantity factorial okay okay i'll give you time to solve or oh, try this one okay um, mathematics may not actually teach us how to solve real life problems, personal problems, but it gives us hope that every problem has its own solution. Anonymous. Nabasa ko yan sa likod ng t-shirt ng lalaki na nakasakay ko sa jeep. Okay. 
Okay. So, six factorial over six, quantity of six minus four factorial. So, cancel out two factorial. Okay. So, the result will be six times five times four times three. Right? There you go. Okay. So, 6 times 5 is 30. Times 4 is 120. Times 3, that's 360. Sir, why not include 2? I said a while ago, cancel the same factorials in the numerator and in the denominator. Mam Novet, very good. Mam Novet, did you use the formula, the permutation? Can you please give a thumbs up? If you did so, Mam Ma Logronio, wow, very good. See, natututo, cancel. Now you're learning. Okay, very good. Okay, permutation. This is permutation. Okay, very good. Let's proceed. Okay, here. This one, you're given a problem. How many four-letter words can be formed from the word silver? In 41, you are simply tasked to evaluate okay, the permutation of eight objects at four times R. Mam Batchansila, you can use the formula. Okay, you try. You need to try. Okay, I'll give you time to answer, to solve. Um, please let me answer. There's a chat sa akong estudyante sa college. Wait sa ha? Two minutes. Okay, what's the answer, Ma'am Logroño? The answer is 1,680 B. Yeah, okay, see, it will be easy to solve using the formula. What's the formula again? P, quantity of N, comma, R quantity equals N factorial over the quantity of N minus R quantity factorial. Cancelled out. The same factorial in the numerator and in the denominator. Okay. The correct answer is letter B. Um, four factorial, eight. Yes, ma'am, aboy me. The result is eight times seven times six times five because we are going to cancel out the factorial. That is the answer. So eight times seven times six times five. Mam Ma Ma Panugul, <laughs> don't worry. That's why we're here. This is the third uh, third item that we use permutation. Okay? Mam Ma Yuson, to Mama Din. Very good. Okay. Memorize the formula. Permutation, P quantity N comma R quantity equals N factorial over quantity of N. N minus R factorial. Cancel out the same factorial. In here, we're going to cancel out 4 factorial. 8 minus 4 is 4 factorial. Okay. Very good. Okay. I hope this will help you. If this type of question will 
come out in the September exam. Okay. Next question. Number 42. Oy. Here in number, 40, uh, in number 42, we are already, we have already the permutation P, which is 120. And we are tasked to find the N objects. Okay. Take note. Here, we have the values of N and R. But in number 42, we have here, we need to find the value, value of N. Okay. This will be the formula. Please, teachers, screenshot or copy. Take down notes. Okay, medyo matabahaba. We're going to take it slow, slowly, but surely. Okay. Nakikita niyo po ba? Can you, can you see the solution? Okay. Very good, ma'am. Panugol. Other teachers, can you please um, press the thumbs up button or the heart if you can see the solution? And if you think this can help you. Okay. Take note. Number 42, P, permutation of N at R four times. Okay. We are already, we have already the value of P, the permutation, which is 120. We're tasked to find the value of N. Okay. Simply cross multiply. Okay. Cross multiply. Now remember, Every whole number has an imaginary denominator one, right? Okay. Okay, now we simply need to cross multiply n and 1, 20, and this quantity. Okay, Mom Bachansila, yes, Mom, I think this is recorded. Okay, so n factorial times 1, that's n factorial, equals 120 times n minus 4 quantity factorial. Okay. Now, if you can see here, these are the values of factorial. For example, 1 times 1 equals 1. 2 factorial, that's 2 times 1. 3, 3 times 2 times 1, 6. And goes the list goes on okay take note 
Five, that's five times four times three times two times one, 120. Sir, in this equation here, 20 is being converted to five factorial. Okay. We need to convert 120 to five factorial so that we can cancel out the factorials no in the given equation okay so it will become n equals 5 times the quantity of n minus 4 so n equals use the distributive property That's 5n minus 20. Okay? And we need to combine similar terms. Okay? This transitive property, transpose n here, and 20 transpose to here. So negative 20, when transposed to the other side, will be positive. And N, positive here, when transposed to the other side, is negative. So 5N minus N, that's 4N. 4N, okay? And 20 will be positive. Divide both sides by 4. Divide both sides by 4. So n cancel out, n equals 20 divided by 4. The answer is 5. n equals 5. Okay? Now let's check. Okay, here. If n is 5 and the given r was 4, that's 5 factorial equals 5 minus, over 5 minus 4 quantity factorial. So cancel ang 1. So 5 times 4, that's 20. Times, times 3, that's 60. Times 4, I mean times 20, times 2, that's 120. Okay, so 120. The result Okay, malahi ang sign kung mabalhin sa pikas, murag siya. <laughs> murag anak ma'am. No, sao na lang. Okay. Okay, transit uh, property na si ha. Okay. Okay, let's proceed. Nakuha ra, give me thumbs up. Give me a heart kung nakuha ra. Okay, we, need, we are going to discuss it again. Okay, very good. Okay, very good, very good. Thank you. So, see, you will not regret being here. If we are tasked to find the n, just cross multiply and then convert the given p into a factorial to cancel out all the factorial. Question, sir, what if the given uh, permutation is not found here in the factorials? Here, here's the 
example. Okay, there you go. Sold for N. A permutation of N objects, two equals 30. Let's go back. No 30 here in the factorials. 1, 2, 6, 24, and 20, 7, 20. And the list of numbers goes higher. What are we going to do? Okay. Listen. What are we going to do? Here's the solution. Okay. Take note. The same rule, the same process apply, only take note that since there is no 30, uh, yes, there is no 30 in a factorial, there is no 30. Since there is no 30 in the factorial, find two consecutive number numbers with a product of 30. 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The result is 6 times 5. Right? So, 6 times 5, that's 30. And use the bigger digit. This one, use the bigger digit. This one, six. Okay. Find two consecutive number. Consecutive numbers with a product of the given permutation, which is 30. So that's five, six and five, right? Six and five. Then... Use the bigger digit, 6 and 2. It's just a trial and error. If the given permutation is not found here in the list. no. Okay. 7 factorial, 8 factorial, 9 factorial, no 30. So 6, the permutation of 6 objects in 2 times equals the n factorial over 6 minus 2 quantity factorial, that's 6 factorial over 4 factorial. 6 minus 2 is 4 factorial, right? Then cancel, cancel out the same factorial. Okay? Uh, Charlie, Charlie L. Logroño, anong choose the bigger digit man, sir? That's the rule. Ma'am Logroño, that's the rule. Again, that's the rule, ma'am. Okay? In this case, when the given P is not found here in the list of all factorials, find the two consecutive digits with a product of the given So, you need to choose the bigger digit. Okay, the bigger digit. Take note of that. Okay. So, when we are going to check, that's 6 times 5 times 4, 6 times 5 times 4 factorial over 4 factorial. Cancel out four factorials. Okay. So six times five, that's 30. Equals 30. So N here is six. Okay. This is only applicable if the given P is not found here in the list. 
in 7 factorial, in 8 factorial, in 9 factorial, 10 factorial, 11 factorial, 12, and the list goes on. Take note. Let's proceed. Okay, can you please give me a thumbs up or a heart? If everything is clear. Teachers, please. Oh, will I thumbs up? Will I heart? Oh, thank you for that. Okay. Here in number 44. Solve. Seven. Oh, this is very easy. Seven factorial over the quantity of seven minus three quantity factorial. Wow, Mam Novet, very good. So we are going to cancel. That's cancel the four factorial. Okay, cancel four factorial. So that's seven times six, that's 40, 42 times five, that's 210. Very good. Here's the solution. Cancel out the same factorial. Oh, now, Ma'am Yuson, you got the correct answer without doubt. Very good. Okay. Ma'am Panugol. Still thumbs up for math? Okay, take note. N factorial over the quantity of N minus R quantity factorial. Very good, Mam Aboymi. Very good. Mam Panugul, very good. Okay, next. Let's proceed. Here, number 45. We're done with permutation. Now we're here with radicals. Simplify. 3 over the square root of 5. Can you comment down your answers? We are going to apply the rationali rationalization okay, of the denominator. Katugo na mo, ma'am. Di pa katulogon, sir. Di pa kaya pa. Okay? Uh, so tomorrow we'll be having our culmination day for the CWTS. Uh, so kaya pa, ma'am. Panugol. Kaya natin to. We still have five items. Okay. Simplify three over square root of five. Anybody? Try to guess. Okay. So the answer is letter C. We'll show the solution. Okay. Here. Take note. Remember that if it is simply ask there, 3 over square root of 5. Simplify. Take note that the denominator should not have radical sign. Okay? So, in order to remove the radical, the denominator, simply multiply it by itself. Because if we are going to multiply square root by 5, 
by square root of 5, the result will be square root of 25, and it's a perfect square. 25, square root of 25 is 5. 3 times square root of 5, that's 3 square root of 5. Okay? Sir, why not cross multiply it? Take note. Rule in multiplying fraction, numerator times the numerator, denominator times the denominator. Dako, di pa ko katulogon si Roy. Siga pa akong mata dere. Math na good na. Makamat. <laughs> okay. Take note. Okay, take note. We need to rationalize the denominator by multiplying it by itself in order to remove the radical sign. Okay, to make it a perfect square. Sir, what if this is, for example, um, Cube root of 2. Are we also going to multiply it by cube root of 2? No. In order to remove the radical, we need to multiply it by perfect cube root. Cube root of... Cube root of... Cube root of 4 equals cube root of 8. And 8 is a perfect cube root equals 2. Take note. Okay? So 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So 8 is a perfect cube root. Okay? In order to take, cancel out, no, the radical, if cube root, we need to find also a number multiplied to the given in order to have a perfect. Okay, take note. Okay. Okay, the result is when we are going to simplify 3 over cube root of 5, a square root of 5, I mean, the result is 3 cube root, square root of 5 over 5. Okay, let's proceed. Here. Okay. Very good, ma'am. Panugul. Dili di ay dukaon basta rizal ug math. That's the spirit. Number 46. Square root of 6 over square root of 3. Simplify. Use the same formula. Um, I mean, process. Okay. Here. Number 46. Square root of 6 over square root of 3. Simplify. Mam Novet, letter C. Any answer? Any answer? Mam Panugo, letter C. Mam Logroño, letter B. Okay. Any other answer? Good night po, sir. We'll watch the last three questions. Bukas po. God bless. Okay, ma'am. Aboy me. Okay. God bless too, ma'am. Aboy me. Okay. Take note that we need to multiply in order to remove the radical here in the denominator. We need to multiply both radicals by square root of 3. Right? the result will be square root of 9. And if we are going to multiply square root of 6 by square root of 3, 
the result will be square root of 18. Here in letter B, square root of 18 over square root of 9. Take note that square root of 9 is a perfect square. Square root of 9 is 3. And 18 can still be simplified. Okay? That's square root of 2 times square root of 9. Here's the solution. The answer is letter D, teachers. The answer is letter D. The solution is here. Yes, Ma'am Logroño, we need to simplify if it can still be simplified. Okay? Take note. Here. Square root of 6 over square root of 3 times square root of 3 over square root of 3. Okay? So square root of 3 times square root of 3, that's square root of 9. Square root of 6 times square root of 3, that's square root of 18. If it is possible to simplify a radical, we need to simplify it. Square root of 9 times square root of 2. Square root of 9 is a perfect square. That's 3 square root of 2. Okay? Simplify. Square root of 18 is, if simplified, square root of 18 is square root of 3 times 2. Oh, and cancelled out three. Cancelled out three. So the result will be square root of two. No? Mukhang malayo. But the correct answer is square root of two. Okay? Take note. Square root of two. Mom. And sir, teachers, take note if it is possible to simplify, please do simplify the answers. Okay. Let's proceed. Number 47. Here. We have number 47, 48, 49, and 50. Okay. Number 47. Simplify. Square root of AB squared over 12A squared B cubed. Okay. okay. I'll just show you the answer and the solution. The answer is letter A. Why? Here's the solution. Okay, teachers, cancel out B squared. Okay, cancel out B squared. Okay, B squared. Okay, this one. Because this is this one. Um, this is we're going to convert it. That's a raised to the power of one half and b is two over two. One half here is the power of the root. Take note, okay. Power of the root. So the result will be B square root of A. Okay. Now the denominator. What about the denominator? 12 can be 3 times 4. And 4 is a perfect square. So, square root of 4, that's 2. So, over 
two. How many two are there in a squared? Oh, how many two are there in a squared? One. So that's two a. Okay. How many two are there in b cube? B. One. So that's b. And since it's cube, we'll have remaining b. And three, the factor of 12, three and four, that's three B. Okay, canceled out this one. So the result is two A, square root of two A over two A, square root of three B. Okay, the result. Okay, take note. Take note, take note, take note. Okay, let's proceed. Number 40. Forty-eight. Okay, here, simplify. The same um, rule, the same process, we only have here cube root, not square root. Okay, the result is letter D. Here, we'll have the solution. Take note. What are, we need to factor out 32. We need to factor out 32 where the other one is a perfect cube root. So we have 8 and 4, right? A. A. cube times a squared times b cube and b cube okay b cube because when we are going to multiply variables, we're actually adding the exponent. This one is a perfect cube root. That's two. This is a cube root, okay? Okay, a, a cube. Cancel, that's a. This one? One and two. Take note. That's B squared. Duha. Duha ka B ang nakansil. And this one remains. And this one. So that's cube root of four a squared. The answer K. Okay. Kaya, give me a thumbs up or a heart if nakuha ang answer or nakafollow sa pag sa solution. Ang 32, we simply factored it out. 8 and 4. Because we wanted to try to simplify it. Question, sir, what if not a perfect cube root? No factor whereby it does not have a perfect cube root, a perfect square root. So remain it there. Leave it there. For example, cube root of 6 a to the power of 5 
b to the power of 6. There is no factor for 6 with a perfect cube root. Okay? But a can be factored out and b can be factored out. So that will... Okay, I'll try to write it down. So, cube root of 6, since it does not have a factor, a cube times a squared. Okay? And 2b. B cube, B cube, and another B cube. So the result will be, this one is cancelled out, this one, one, and two. So the result will be A, B squared, cube root, 6a squared. Okay? Okay, teachers? Take note. Okay, very good. Okay, we'll erase it now. And then we'll proceed. We only have last two digit number. Okay, number 49. Again, evaluate. Quantity of 81 raised to the power of negative one half. Okay, what are we going to do? The answer is one ninth. This is the solution. Okay, take note. Now remember... I think it was during our first discussion that any variable or any number raised to the power of a negative exponent should be written under, okay? Should be a denominator of a one. For example, x to the power of negative two, okay? Is equal to one over x squared. Okay? Now here, we have a negative exponent, which is one half. And take note, the denominator, if the exponent of a variable or a digit is a fraction, the denominator will be the power of the root. Take note. Power of the root. Okay. Say, for example, A raised to the power of one third. That's equal to the cube root of three. The cube root of A, I mean. Okay? If we are going to convert this one into radical. Take note. Why not? Why is it that it's not in fraction form? Because the exponent here is in positive. Here, the exponent is negative one half. So, the result will be 1 over the square root of 81. Okay? And 81 here is a perfect square root. That's 9. So the result will be 1 and square root of 81 is 9. So 
81 raised to the power of negative one half, the result is one over nine. If it is positive, the result will be nine. Okay, for example, 81 raised to the power of one half. It's positive, positive one half. 81 raised to the power of positive one half, that's square root of 81 and equals nine. Take note. Okay. This is raised to the power of a negative exponent. This is raised to, the pa to a positive exponent, one half. Maod ay ma'am, logro nyo. Kayo mo din ikatulgan. Okay. Take note. To the denominator of the fraction exponent, is the power of the root. Take note. And the numerator is the exponent of the base or the variable. We'll have that example here in number 50. I'll show you. Okay, we'll have now number 50, the last number. And here you go. Okay, see? You have here? 8 raised to the power of negative 5 third. I said a while ago that 3 here, the denominator of the fractional exponent is the power of the root. That's the power of the root. Okay, so it will become 1 over cube root of 8 quantity raised to the power of 5. Okay, so if this one is evaluated, the first result is letter A. Okay, why we have 1? Because of the negative sign of the exponent, okay? Then eight is a perfect cube root, take note. Cube root of eight, that's two. So this will be canceled out and it will become two raised to the power of five. After this one, this one. Okay, so one, over 2 raised to the power of 5, that's 1 over 32. No more negative because we did change this one to a fraction. Now, what if, sir, it's not a negative exponent? Say, for example, 8 raised to the power of 5 third. What will happen? It will become your broad of eight to the power of five. So it will not be one over thirty two, but simply thirty two because. It's a positive exponent. Take note, if positive exponent, whole number. If negative exponent, change it into fraction. Okay, thank you, teachers, for listening. Thank you for staying with us at LCTC. I hope you did learn something this evening. Okay, so thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. If you did learn something this evening or a heart. Thank you. Doc Axel.
thank you Miss Panugol, thank you Miss Logroño, Miss Yuson. God bless, thank you for staying. I hope you did learn something this evening. Thank you. Sir Arnel, thank you. Um Lori V, thank you. And to all the teachers who are with us this evening. Mam Ma George, Jen Chan, thank you. Doc um, Axel, good evening, Doc. Lamorang nakatog nas Doc Axel. So teachers, ayaw mo ka kwan ha for the next session and for other reviews no? here at LCTC. Okay. <laughs> okay, murag na katog na gyud. Wala basta Rizal og math. Oh, mao na. <laughs> now, we should enjoy learning. Okay? And we did I hope you did learn something this evening. Kung paspas ragani ko next time, uh, just feel free to comment uh, or uh, message. Okay.